Amy at EuroLuxHome.com. Welcome back to YouTube. If you enjoy learning about European antiques, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and maybe even leave a comment. It really helps a small business. So today I would like to talk about why veneer is not a dirty word. So often I have customers reach out and when they ask if something is veneer, then I hear them go, oh, and I know that they have a misperception of what veneer is. So I want to change that by first of all telling you even King Louis XIV himself had amazing veneer furniture. And veneer throughout history has always been equated with very high quality on such a par that it was for the royalty. So how did veneer get a bad rap? Well, let's explore that and figure it out. So first of all, I thought it would be helpful to just explain to you what veneer is. So veneer is when you take wood or other materials materials and slice it very thinly. So thin that it ranges between 0.6 millimeters to 6 millimeters, so very thin. And then that thin slice is glued onto a substrate. And that substrate can be solid wood or it could be other engineered woods such as particle board or MDF. So why do we do veneer? Well, veneer is done to achieve a beautiful aesthetic look. That's the original reason that veneer was used. Any wood can be used, but it's mostly used for exotic or rare or expensive woods. The very thin cutting of the wood enables you to create beautiful patterns due to the exposed grain of the wood. So for instance, if we think of flame mahogany, or burled walnut. Those are woods that when cut at certain angles creates a beautiful graining pattern. Behind me, you can see a bed and this big panel has a veneer pattern on it. And so it creates something very beautiful by using this woodworking technique. So where does the bad rap come from? It all stems back to the rise of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. Up until that point, veneers had been done by hand. And you can imagine you can only cut so thin by hand. And so with the development of technology, veneers were able to be sliced much thinner. And there was also an improvement in adhesive technology. So the glue became stronger. But the negative is that the veneer process began to be used as a way to significantly reduce the cost of furniture. Now, the idea was that if they reduce the cost of furniture, that then furniture would be more affordable to more people and therefore more accessible to more people. Well, over time, people began to associate this idea of cheap manufacturing with veneer. And when pieces were made in very poor conditions using poor quality veneers, very thin and poor quality adhesives, then they would peel up and chip. And so that is how nowadays, sometimes when people hear the word veneer, they think that one, it's low quality and two, it's not going to be durable or last. And so what I want to do in today's video is tell you that that is truly a misconception. It certainly happened in the 19th century. It was a result of the industrial revolution and using technology in veneering processes. But if we look back in history, I think that you'll be able to come to understand that veneer throughout time has really been associated with very high quality artisanship. So let's start. When did people start veneering for the first time? Well, it goes all the way back to Egypt and Rome to conserve very expensive wood. And then you could produce more pieces with uh, very beautiful wood on them. By the time we move into the 15th and 16th century in the Renaissance period, we have artisans beginning to experiment with inlay, also called intarsia. And there is a beautiful room at the Ducal Palace in Urbino, and it is called the Studiolo of Duke Federico de Montefeltro, the office of this Italian 
Italian Duke. As we look at the panels, they are absolutely amazing. When you stand back and look around the room, it looks like the doors are open to the cabinets and you're able to peek in and in one case even see a little bird in a cage. But really, when you take a second look, all of that is wooden inlay. The doors are completely closed. But the artisans were playing with perspective, creating beautiful works of art by cutting small pieces of wood and laying them together. By the time you reach the 17th and 18th century, the veneering process has really reached its golden age. Lots of furniture artisans are making amazing, beautiful pieces out of veneer. And again, remember, all of this veneer was hand cut. And so, for the most part, it would range from 1.6 millimeters to three millimeters. So that's relatively thick veneer. So on an antique piece, you really don't have to worry about the durability as much because the veneer is much thicker than on modern pieces that we see today where durability comes into question. The Italian and French artisans in particular really revived and refined the veneering process. And new styles of veneer began to be created. We have a style called parquetry, which is right here in the middle. And that's cutting these little tiny pieces and putting them all together like a jigsaw in order to create a beautiful geometric pattern. And we often see that on floors. And we'll do another video telling you all about parquetry. Another style of veneer that was developed at this time is called marquetry. And that is seen right here on this headboard where you can see the flowers and the little ribbon and the circle around it has all been created by again, cutting little tiny pieces of wood, fitting them together like a jigsaw puzzle and then gluing them on this case to the solid wood substrate behind. So that's marquetry, and we'll probably do another video about that as well. But I wanted to emphasize in this video that veneer throughout history has really been a sign of extreme high quality. In fact, as I mentioned, Louis XIV had his own veneer specialist, and his name was Andre Charles Boulle a very famous furniture manufacturer. The Bull work or Bull style exists today. Not only did he work for the king, but he was invited to actually live at Versailles in the palace. So that was a phenomenal honor for an artisan to be able to live right there in the palace with the king. And he specialized in actually hand cutting brass and laying it into hand cut tortoise shell. It is striking. Bull style is really amazing. And we'll probably do another video showing you all about the bull style. But I wanted you to understand that bull work, and again, all of the other pieces that artisans were making in the 17th, 18th century were very high quality and were for very wealthy patrons. And in fact, the most expensive and magnificent piece of furniture that has ever been created uh, is called the badminton chest. And it was developed in the early 18th century and was handcrafted, of course, for Henry Somerset, who was the third Duke of Beaufort in England. And it combined veneer as well as pietra dura. And pietra dura is the process basically of taking veneer slices of precious and semi-precious stones and then adhering them onto a surface. The badminton chest has not only wood, but slices of lapis lazuli and amethyst and other precious stones. This piece has been sold twice and twice it has sold for the most money ever that a piece of furniture was sold for. The first time was back in 1990. The piece sold for 8.58 million pounds and then it was sold again in 2004 for 19 million pounds. So I wanted to emphasize that veneer is not a dirty word. In fact, the most expensive piece of furniture ever in the history of the world was veneer. So you don't have to worry and let me know if I can answer any additional questions for you about veneer or any of our beautiful pieces that have veneer on them. I hope that this was enjoyable for you. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and maybe even leave a comment. See you next time.